One of the things we'll be doing as IT administrators is to add users, users and groups in Active Directory using PowerShell. So we can see the get-ad user, and we're filtering down to show the SAM account name, which is the traditional name uh, that we see in Active Directory. So if I hit Enter, we can see all the different users all in a row that you see right here. Now we want to add some users. So let's just do a really simple command to add a new Active Directory user. So if we right click there and put, paste in new dash ad user dash name and the name is Tom. Hit enter and Tom is now created. So where did Tom get created? Well, if we go back to Active Directory users and computers, go to users, then we see Tom was just created right here in the users folder. So you can tell the, the difference between a folder and an organi organizational unit simply by looking in Active Directory users and computers and looking at the pictures. So you see a little tiny picture inside the folder, that's an organizational unit. Otherwise, it's just a plain old folder where group policies cannot be applied. But this is the default container for new users if you don't specify. Also take a look at the arrow pointing down. You see Tom's uh, next to Tom's name. That means that the account is by default created disabled. We can right click on the account and choose enable, but first we have to give it a password, otherwise we'll get an error. So let's put reset password. We'll put in the password twice for Tom and click OK. And now we can right click and choose to enable the account. All right, but we can do all that through PowerShell as well. So let's go back down to PowerShell and do a little bit more complex command. Now we're going to create a user named Tammy. So let's paste that command in. So you see new dash ad user dash name Tammy. So, so far it's the exact same command. But now we're adding the dash other attributes uh, portion. And then we have the at symbol followed by these curly brackets. And we're putting in title of, uh, the title is going to be director. So what that means is if we double click on Tammy's name, we're going to see in the title uh, in, of her properties, we're going to see the name director. And we can do any one of these different ones. So hit refresh, we see Tammy, double click on Tammy, and we'll go over to organization, and we see job title, director. Look at that, it worked. We could have also put in department, we could have put in company, we could have put in any, any one of these different uh, things, the telephone number, home phone number, that kind of thing. So there's uh, different switches for each one of these uh, various different fields that we can fill in. All right, so let's do a little bit more complex. Go back to PowerShell once again, and this time we've got a really complex uh, one for you just to give you a good idea of how far you can go with this. So we'll start out with uh, really simple. We'll just right click. We'll choose new AD user John Smith. Now we're going to go a little bit further with that, and we're going to say the given name is going to be John. That's going to be for the first name. And the surname, or the last name, is going to be Smith. We'll go a little bit further. Now we'll choose the SAM account name, which once again is what will show up in Active Directory. And we'll just, uh, there we go, put a space there. And we have dash Sam account name, j.smith. So we can mix up how it is that we put this in here if we want. Now we'll go even further in this and we'll say dash user principal name, j.smith at widget llc.internal. So this goes to the user principal name. Now that is very similar to the SAM account name. The SAM account name is more the old fashioned way of naming something in Active Directory. Uh, even goes back to uh, NT4 days where you have the SAM account name. But the new way of doing things is the user principal name. And in this case, we're just putting in j.smith at widget llc.internal. So when, uh, uh, John Smith goes to log in, he could either put in widget LLC backslash J Smith, or he could put in j.smith at widget LLC.internal. So that's the newer way of putting in a username when the uh, person goes to log in. Now we're pasting in the path. So we see the dash path command right there. And we're putting uh, John, instead of putting in the, in the default users folder, we're going to put John into an actual organizational unit. And that's going to be uh, the information technology OU 
in the widget LLC internal domain. So if we go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, you can see there is an Information Technology OU, and that's, this is where we're going to be putting John here in just a second. So let's go back up here, and we'll, we're going to add more information in here to make this even more granular. Here we go, Account Password. We can see the input password, enable true, and uh, that completes. So that, that way this account is going to have a password. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And here's the password. So it's prompting me to put the password in. So I didn't actually put the password into the command string. I just put in the prompt for the password. So I'm putting in password just like that. And now it's done. Now if we go over to our information technology OU and hit refresh, then we see there's John Smith. Let's go ahead and double click on John Smith and we can see the, it put in the first name, it put in the last name, which is the surname that it showed up. And it gave other information such as the user login name, which uh, is the SAM account name here, j.smith, and the UPN or user principal name is up here. Now in this case we called them the same, but we could have done that, that uh, differently if we wanted to. And then we automatically put that password in. Now by putting in that password, we can see that John Smith is already enabled. I did not have to enable John Smith because we went ahead and put in a password. Without the password, the account is automatically disabled. So let's take a look at that uh, command just one more time. We can see we started with new AD user, John Smith, then the given name, surname, SAM account name, old-fashioned name, followed by the user principal name. Then we went to the path. We put, uh, put John in the information technology OU of our Active Directory domain, and then we prompted ourselves for a password. Now, my password was not all asterisks. It just masks it when I type it. So that's how we create our user. All right, so the users are all, uh, can all be created. Let's now create a group in PowerShell as well. So we'll clear our screen. And we'll once again start out with a simple one. So we have new dash ad group. So I'll paste that in and we'll put in the name of the Avengers. So the group, the Active Directory group names the Avengers. Now, once again, I did not specify an organizational unit, so it's going to put it into the users folder. Now it's asking for a group scope. And basically that means, uh, do we want to have this uh, local? Do we want to have it domain? You know, how, how do we want, what type of scope do we want? And there's three different types. So if we go back to Active Directory and we right click here and choose new group, we can see the different scopes. So we see group scope, we have domain.local, global, or universal. And global is the default. Let's go ahead and choose the default, which is going to be global. So we'll type that in, hit enter, and now it's done. We'll go back into our users folder, and we should see our Avengers group. And there it is, third one from the top. We double click and we see it's a global group. And by default, it's going to create a security group unless you specify a distribution group. Let's create another AD group. This time we're going to make it a little bit more complex. We're going to add some additional options that we did not do in the last one. So it's going to start out the same. It's going to be new dash AD group. However, we're going to put in the path of the OU equals human resources OU, uh, then widget LLC dot internal, just like our domain. So if we go over to our human resources OU, this is where it's going to show up as soon as we're done with the command. All right, so now that we've decided which OU to put it in, instead of the default users folder, now we're going to determine the group scope. So as we discussed last time, the group scope ha has three different options. One of those is domain local. The other is global, and the third one is universal. And I have other videos that describe what each of those means. All right, so now we're going to put in the name. The name of our group is going to be... HR dudes. So HR dudes, we've got dash name, and then we have, I know it's a little bit difficult because it's kind of cut off here, uh, but we have um, the quotes, then HR dudes. You don't really need the quotes if you don't have any spaces, but I went ahead and put that in anyway just to show that, that you can do that. But if you do have spaces in your name, you definitely want to put uh, in the uh, quotes on either end. 
Then we have the group category. So again, if we don't do this, it's going to be security by default. But I'm going to go ahead and paste in group category of distribution because we're going to create this as a distribution group, which is typically used if you have an email server. So I'll hit enter and now it's done. Let's go over to our human resources OU, hit refresh. And there's our HR dudes distribution group. Double click on it. We see it was created as a domain local rather than the default global. And it was created as a distribution rather than the default security. Although you can easily change that if you'd like. There are a lot more additional options and switches you can put in. And you can check those out at technet.microsoft.com. That gives you an idea of how to create users and groups in Active Directory.